So we talked a little bit about cabinet architecture and sort of how that plays into the uh, the evolution of these speakers. And uh, you know, that's not the whole story. There's also the engineering and sophistication of the drivers and, and how they're built that plays into it that really is able to take advantage of that. Maybe we can uh, get into that a little bit. No, you actually put that very well. That's exactly right, is that um, the acoustically centered time alignment is only as good as the performance of the drivers that we're using. And we have some all new drivers that we're using in uh, Ultra Evolution series that are extremely exciting. Um, and the first one that I want to talk about, because it's something you and I worked back and forth over for years, literally, on developing the next level of tweeter performance. And um, we developed this diamond-coated tweeter mm -hmm. that I've never heard a tweeter that has this level of detail without being too bright and abrasive. It's really quite impressive. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this is really the, the forefront of, of modern material science, where we take a already excellent aluminum dome tweeter and we apply it's excellent in the sense that it can deliver really great detail yeah it's very absolutely, quick absolutely absolutely it's got great transient response it already has a great frequency response we really wanted to ev evolve that we wanted to basically grow the performance of, of that tweeter beyond what it what it's already doing so through a process called vapor deposition we can literally grow a layer of, of diamond carbon on the surface of the tweeter. And what that ends up doing is it takes that breakup mode and pushes it way higher in frequency. And it actually takes the whole frequency So breakup frequency, just so everyone understands, breakup frequency is where the tweeter starts getting a little bit, yeah. just slightly out of control. Like mm -hmm. It's not even audible to most people, but this takes it so far beyond audibility that um, this tweeter is completely effortless. Sparkling, effervescent, yep. clear, detailed, and effortless. Is Absolutely. that fair to say? Totally fair to say. And and it's uh, and it's really taken the whole frequency response and it it pushes that breakup mode much higher in frequency and it actually smooths out the whole the main range of the of the of the tweeter all the way down to the bottom end. So we can actually have a lot better control and a better result how we cross over that tweeter to the mid range and other drivers. So we get clarity, we get effortless high frequency response, and we get uh, um, without sacrificing detail, we mm -hmm. get that sort of warmth and smoothness that you really want from a high-end speaker. I would call it probably, warmth and smoothness maybe overstates it. Maybe it's a better way to say it is the refinement mm -hmm. that you look for from a high-end tweeter. And, uh, you know, combining that with the um, acoustically centered time alignment, now we get the full benefit of the, of the cabinet architecture. Absolutely. Fair to say? Yeah. So Smith, we experimented with a lot of different driver materials before we arrived at the diamond-coated uh, tweeter. We looked at um, Brillium, we looked at EMF, we looked at soft domes, high-performance soft domes, and we arrived at the diamond-coated tweeter for a lot of reasons. Um, I think we found Beryllium to be high-performing, but very fragile and maybe longevity was a little bit suspect, right? Yeah, the, the, the Beryllium has great acoustic properties, but it is incredibly fragile. And so... Uh, SVS owners want to have their speakers for a long time. Yeah. And, and many SVS owners want to be able to play them as loud as they want to. And Absolutely. And we certainly support that. One of the things I noticed uh, first when, when looking at these new speakers was the, the tweeter diffuser. And, you know, it, it's a departure from what we did in the original series, but there's some real acoustic benefits in it. And I think it really represents our approach to create a true evolution and leave no stone unturned. What exactly uh, went into that development? Our new organic cell lattice diffuser, it basically has yeah two, two real properties. The first property is that it needs to protect the tweeter dome. The second property is that the diffuser ring is correcting the tweeter's response for the, the flattest fre frequency response at the widest uh, listening window. And so this new structure that we developed, it uses a, a, a cellular-based lattice that basically suspends the, the diffuser ring while also having acoustic properties itself. So and the, and the, the openings look kind of irregular. That's right. Is there right. a benefit of that? Yeah, so the irregularities, it's a, it's a semi-random uh, pattern uh, based on a cellular structure. And so that all, that all meshed together creates a lattice that suspends the diffusing ring. So do you have too much time on your hands? Because it's a <laughs> lot of detail, and that is really cool. I mean, this, is, this is, again, gets back to 
modern material science and some of the new techniques available to make these new structures that aren't, don't just look interesting, but they actually have acoustic properties to them. So you wouldn't have even probably known about these benefits if you weren't able to measure them with Klippel and other, other, That's right. other technology uh, measuring devices that really were not available uh, until the present day. Absolutely. Or even the, some of the new modeling tools to even make these new structures. Very cool. Another big evolution in the, uh, the new speaker series is uh, we have drivers on the, the back of the speaker now, which we've never had before. And you know some of that was learned from what we did with the Ultra Towers as far as the execution, but it's done in a little bit of a different way. Uh, let's talk about that force balance woofer array that we've created. I did want to talk about the, we, you know, we, we worked on the Ultra Tower and one of the really cool benefits of the existing Ultra Tower was that we had four drivers all aiming in different directions in the room and because of that there was no phase cancellation modes. In other words, the bass in the, in the room was very authoritative without being overbearing. It was exactly what you wanted it to be because the drivers were coming from four different places in, physically in the room. We wanted to preserve that benefit, right Smith? But Absolutely. Add, but add some new uh, refinement to it, I guess. And, and even grow that same concept. So now each of the towers has actually four active base drivers. You have the two on the front that are the top and the bottom and then there's a matched pair directly behind those. And so that that plays into that same concept of you have four base drivers in four different places in the room and that's happening on each of the two towers. So there's actually eight base drivers per, per pair. And because they're opposing there's Minimal cabinet resonance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. So get kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, it's a similar concept that we use on the 3000 Micro and on, on the original Ultra Tower. Those those base drivers, they are they are working in a kind of a symphony together, and so the the acoustic energy is going into the room, but the mechanical energy is getting balanced inside the cabinet. So they reinforce themselves in what you hear but they cancel themselves inside the cabinet where dis ca cabinet resonance distortion occurs. Right. So it's really cool. And you can absolutely hear it. One thing that stru has struck me uh, every time I, I spend time listening to them is they really take control of the room and deliver exactly the bass you want with authority but without you know bowling you over. And, and the other cool thing is you have the woofers in their own ported enclosure, mm -hmm. right? That's self-contained. And then the mid-range and tweeter, they're in their own sealed which is exactly what you want for mid-ranges and tweeters. Absolutely. They're in a sealed sub-enclosure, so it's almost as though you have two separate speakers deploying the um, strengths of mid-range and tweeter drivers and the bass drivers separately. Yeah, part of best practices for a three-way design is always making sure that mid-range drivers are in their own separate enclosure and are not getting uh, influenced by the other drivers inside the cabinet. So like we do on all of our three-way towers and center channels, the mid-range drivers are always in their own tuned, separate, sealed enclosure. Smith, so much of what we've talked about has been uh, performance benefits based on some of the, the engineering that you've done. Uh, but we've also been cognizant of things like placement with, with the design. What, um, what led to that and what sort of uh, adjustments have we made to, to really factor that? Yeah, we, we basically mirrored the time alignment on the front of the cabinet to the back of the cabinet. And so the, even though we have rear firing drivers, they're on uh, angled rear panels. And so that actually cr kind of creates space around them naturally. And you can literally push them up against a back wall, which was not perfect uh, in our previous uh, towers. Now, you, despite the fact that the woofers are, there's two of the woofers are rear firing, they can go right up against a rear wall. Not to say that these speakers don't like having some air around them, but you don't have to do that. 